Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. You forgot your show notes, Sensa. Can you imagine? That's what I'm looking for. Over the last three years, we have traveled through the hills and the valleys of Nigeria. I've seen people combine their coastal with a father rice and pomo before. Say what? As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. There is no planting season for us. We produce here every week. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. We advise farmers to top dress with urea at the rate of 90 kg per hectare. For a very long time, I think we neglected farming in Nigeria. We provide loan to these farmers and then we've, uh, we've been working with them for like over 10 years now. So anybody can participate in agriculture. This is Farm and Fortune. John is not new to farming. But when his cabbage farm begins to have challenges he cannot define, how can he combat them? My name is John Azi Abok. I'm a farmer. I find my parents into farming, so I also join them into farming. Farming cabbage. The challenges that we are facing, we used to discover yellow, yellow in, on a leaf. So I don't even know the name of the problem. And the leaf used to dry after I scratched that problem. It will start drying and spoil the cabbage. Our elders say if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. What about if you want to go far? And of course you want to go far, fast and quickly. Ah, go and ask the elders. Don't stress me. I think we need that. We should be asking for help. We should often ask for help from elders. Mm, you have a point there. In fact, we're going to ask an expert in the house on today's episode. Well, maybe we should all do that often. But I'm eager to see Mr. John. Hmm, that's true. And now he's faring on his fortune board. Yes. But for the magnitude of his problem, ah, I'll give him 14. It's too big. Well, considering his farmer attitude, mm -hmm. I'll give him a strong 12 out of 20. Why? It's not a bad score. It's not bad, it's not bad. My name is Helen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And you're welcome to Farm, Farm and, and Fortune. fortune. If John does not have the solution to his challenges, can he find anyone who does? I go through to my friends and ask them. And the reason why I do so, because I realize that nobody has monopoly, monopoly of knowledge. They introduce me what we call Simba Green. That is the chemi chemical they are used to apply to their own farm. So after I done that, I seen changes on my farm and I harvest it very well. You know how the popular saying goes, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. I think our farmer today, Mr. John, has good taste in choice of friends. Not only him. Here on Farm and Fortune, we too seem to have that knack for good guests. We have good tasting guests. And one of those guests is joining us today. He is no other person but the Assistant General Manager, Business Development at Babanguna. Mr. Shegun Babatunde is our guest on today's show. You're welcome, Mr. Shegun. Thank you so much. Uh, good Frank. to see people in agriculture looking dapper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, Babanguna does a lot of um, work with uh, farmers in um, in communities, yeah. what exactly is community farming and why is it so important at this stage for us in this country? Um, I, I think, thank you for having me on the show. Um, then, uh, for community farming, uh, I think um, there's a lot, there are a lot of benefits uh, in community farming. Uh, I think 
the, the major thing is, of, of course, if, you, if we want to start, we want to look at what are the challenges that farmers actually have. They actually access to fund to actually carry out the, all the activities on their farm. And then as soon as that is sorted out, of course, it's easier for them to actually maximize the potential on their farm. And now, how do they get access to fund? Of course, these are guys that don't have uh, anything collateral, anything to serve as collateral, so they can't actually go to the bank to, to get loan and all that. But however, coming together as a community with the same aim, uh, of course, it opens them up to a lot of opportunities, especially when you have investors that want to invest in agriculture and all that, and you know you have this community, community that actually have serve one purpose, they grow the same kind of uh, crop, and then they can come together, build uh, a structure that actually they could leverage on to access all these they, they, that they need, a lot of, a lot of opportunities. Mm, beautiful. So does communal farming um, require that you practice certain kinds of agriculture or certain crops or agricultural produces, uh, produce more peculiar to communal farming? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, if you look at where, where uh, if you look at every region in Nigeria where agriculture is being practiced, you know that at, at each of those locations, there is this crop, there is the, there's a particular, there could be two or three crop they actually focus on. Well, in those communities, that, that, those are local areas where those crop will do well. For example, if you go to the north now, you know there's a certain area in the north where they grow maize, soybeans, rice. There's some other certain area where they grow um, uh, onions and some other crops. So you want to focus in the community where you're not sure that onions will do well and you go and what they practically plant in those areas. Exactly, let's say, for example, it's maize and you plant onions there, then you know that <laughs> there might be there might be a problem for you. Same thing in the southwest where they plant cassava and then you want to grow some other crop like soya beans, which is actually they're actually thriving in the north. You want to grow them in the southwest, you know you might not get as much as yield compared to the north. So for each of those locations, each area, they have their peculiar crop that actually that they grow there. You've been working with these farmers for a while. What do you think the future of uh, communal farming is? We provide loan to these farmers, and then we've uh, we've been working with them for, night, for about ten, over ten years now. We've had ninety nine point nine percent repayment of our loan on a yearly basis. How? Because they 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 form different groups, and then each member of the group ensures that every member pays back their loan. Because if, you, if one, any of your member is defaulting, it's going to affect you. That means you won't be able to access. Mm. So the future is bright. From the success stories that we've actually had, we've had uh, farmers that actually dropped out of school because their parents couldn't afford to send them to school. Now they have their children in our institution. So obviously from what you said and your experience with the Babangona and the farmers in Nigeria, especially the smallholder farmers, there's strength in numbers. There is, there is. And talking there about is. numbers, our farmer, Mr. John, uh, what number would you score him from zero to 40 for, ac for access to resources? If you look at, you watch the documentary, if you look at the access, access to resources, what would you score him from zero to 40? Yeah, I think he utilized the resources that are actually available to him. Of course, at the initial stage, he, couldn't, he didn't realize what he needed to do. Of course, he was passionate about his family, but he was having issues until he reached out and got the necessary knowledge and he was able to access the resources was right there with him and he was able to access it. So I'll score him 35. Yeah. 35, wow, that's a lot. 35 out of 40. And he utilized that yeah. and he, at the end of the day, was smiling and yeah. then it was able to get well. I must thank you again, Mr. Shegun so Mabatunde, for coming on the show and sharing from your wealth experience with us on this show. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thank and you wish you all the very best in your agricultural endeavor. Thank you so much. Thank now, don't go anywhere, you. gentlemen and ladies, because we have a moment right now we're going to talk to you about a D. I Y hack. You're gonna love it. And when we come back, I was speaking to another guest, Dr. Adidayo Shoshino. But don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome to the DIY segment. Today, we will show you how to grow potatoes in your backyard. Get a moderately deep container and fill it with compost. Cut your potatoes into plantable chunks. Plant your potato seeds in the container and ensure they are evenly spaced. Fertilize the top of each planted potato with bone meal and then cover with some additional compost. Check in 90 to 100 days. Dying leaves mean it's time to dig up your potatoes. That's our DIY hack for today. See you next week.
Welcome back. I'm sure you learned one or two important things from that DIY segment. Back in the studio, I have another wonderful guest with us for today's episode. You know, we have a thing for special guests and bringing quality people. On this episode, it's no different. I have somebody very important, very knowledgeable in agribusiness consulting. He is Dr. Adedayo Olalikan Shoshino. Let's welcome him to the studio. You're welcome, sir. Nice having you. So what sparked your interest in that? I mean... Yes, communal farming uh, is a phenomenon where groups of farmers will come together with their resources to articulate in one agribusiness enterprise. It may, it may be land resources, it might be human resources, it might be capital resources, it might be technology resources, it might be even knowledge base. And the, the benefits are quite overwhelming. One, food security. When you come together to actually go into a particular agribusiness, the concept, first consent is to provide food, which is the basic necessity of life. And when communities come together, in most cases, the agenda is to provide food. Number two, you have what is called the training. Uh, because of the resources base in that community, uh, people actually learn from one another. Number three, you talk of the well-being. As a result of engaging in that agribusiness, their skills are developed, their health, the benefits, the well-being, especially those who are even retired or old aged. You mix with the mighty and the lowly, the young. That's the beauty of communal farming. Then, because of communal farming, you have generated a lot of waste as a result of the businesses you are engaging in. And through communal farming, the technology will be to convert the waste generated into wealth. You have what is called waste to wealth management in communal farming, which may not be possible when you are doing it solely. And also, you call what is called biodiversity. Uh, in biodiversity, there are some places the farm, the group of farmers must have been farmed over years. They will not leave you for some time. It's an agreement. Let's leave it for about 20, 20 years. That's what they call it, uh, evil forests. They also call it sacred place. No. It's a biodiversity technique whereby you allow the land to follow over a period of time. We have all the microfauna, the microflora, the wildlife, all the eco uh, ecosystem development will have been completed before the last switch over. And we also have the, the training, like the documentary watch. You actually have a knowledge base to form a mentor-mentee relationship. If you are practicing solo farming or individual farming, you may not have a mentor to actually fall back upon. You also get a kind of, uh, you know, innovation. You know, one man's knowledge is, is, is limited. And therefore, because you are engaged in the communal farm, you have innovation that is coming in. And you can also involve in, you know, articulate, articulating views, you know, training, knowledge base, and this, there are so many you can actually get involved. Thank you very much for that, sir. Apart from this input you mentioned, you know, learning from one another, training, uh, health benefits, and the like. So is that, what about finance? Does communal farming uh, encourage better access to financial or other resources that we haven't mentioned? I did mention while I was defining communal farming that they are coming up with their resources. You know, everybody will come with their own resources. And I'm thinking from uh, communal farming, you, you dovetail into what is called agri-cooperative. And each of them will have contributed into the finance profile of that community. And with that, you have access to funds. And they have access to knowledge, they have access to something. So in communal farming, the, the, the challenge might not be finance. There are other threats or challenges. And I'll mention them. One is the security. One is the, the conflict resolution in, in a communal, a communal system. We call it group dynamics, individual differences. I want to do it this way. These are the challenges and also threats in individual threats. We might actually come, but finance may not be a major problem when you are going to communal farming. If I were to ask you to score him on a scale of 0 to, to 20, what would you score him for growth potential? What do you think his potentials are for success with what he's currently doing on a scale of 0 to 20? Give him a score. I was calling 16. And I'll tell you why. Why? He has a mentor. Hmm. He has a no, rich knowledge base. 
Some farmers, when they have problems, they just relax and they forget about it. They don't have somewhere to go, to go and tap into their knowledge base. But this Mr. John was able to go within the community. And I operated a school called Farmer Field School. It's where farmers who come with their ingenuity, their knowledge base, to solve a particular problem. And you can only give what you don't have. The mentor within the community with appropriate solutions to uh, any challenge that actually comes. Before you now look at external source, by external source, I'm thinking of research, the on station universities, college mm -hmm. education, all those knowledge base. No. But there is this ingenuity within the community to solve their problem. And that is what Mr. John benefited. Another thing is that uh, Mr. John belonged to that association. Mm. And because of that, they were able to associate with his own, with his own fellow colleague. Why not for the fact that Mr. John belongs to that community? Nobody will give him any assistance. Mm. That's the benefit of communal farming. Beautiful. So you give our farmer, Mr. John, 16, 16 out of 20. 20. That's already going to A like that. Is A. Mm. So if I were to ask you what you think about his overall score, what do you think he's going to score? Overall score is 36. No. I will have given him 100% or so, 40. So we have four categories that we're yeah. scoring our farmers, yeah. you know, and some of them are the ones that just one of them you have graded. Other people, guests have graded other ones. So he, you scored him 16 over 20. Then another score for... Uh, access to resources, access to you know, resources. he has a score for that. There's another score for the magnitude of his problem that he's trying to solve. He has a score for that. There's another score for farmer attitude. Those four key things. So overall, 100. It sounds like you are giving him 16, other people are giving him such similar marks. What do you think over 100 is going to score enough? You know, he's going to score about, uh, by my own assessment, he's going to score 75. Hmm, 75. Yeah. I okay. Will, I will have given him 100. Wow. Simply because... <laughs> The fertilizer or the solution used, the chemical he used, we were not sure of the active ingredient. Mm. Okay. But because of what somebody recommended, and mm. that's why I want to go into what is called the on farm adopting research. You don't just go and address a solution just like that. You must have what is called a technology base certified. Mm. It must have been proven. Uh, knowledge re obtained from research through on station should not just go directly to the field. It must pass through a system or procedure called on farm, whereby the researcher and the farmer will have tested the validity of problem solution device before you now recommend it to a farmer. Exactly. But in this case, we weren't sure whether the recommendation was from research. Hmm. You just felt a friend said you should go and do this. We weren't sure of the active ingredient that we'll use. And from what I saw there, the yellowing of the leaves can be as a result of maybe nitrogen deficiency. Then the, what is the proportion of the yellowing of the leaves with regards to the entire farm? True. If it's 10%, we can overlook it. You have a point there, sir. But what we are sure of, however, is the fact that his total score on our fortune board is ready. Let's take a look at his total score on our fortune board and see what he has. Wow. There you go. Mr. John scored a total of 77 out of 100. Like you said, he's an A, a list farmer. Yes, I quite agree with this score. Beautiful, beautiful. And at this point, I must thank you so much, Dr. Adi Dayo, uh, for coming to the show. Thank you so much. To share your wealth of experience with us. Thank you so and, much. And uh, taking time out to be with us, to spend time with us on the show. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. It's and we wish you all the very best in your agribusiness. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere yet because we have more for you on this episode. Let's quickly join Helen on Secrets of the Soil. We'll be back. My situation helped me to grow by advice, you know, and introduce each other on something that he know it and I don't know it. So to that association, make us to grow. From just like me, I started it from two hectare, I two plot, now I can farm it to one hectare to two hectare.
is still firm and fortune. And of course, this segment, we're looking at the secrets of the soil. We have our soil expert, so beautiful, in person of a very chuko, Mariam Ugadi. Good to have you, madam. Thank you, ma And thank you for always coming to educate us. What do you have for us today? Thank you, Helen. In episode five, we talked about how soil provides macronutrients and micronutrients to crops. We have learned about macronutrients. Today, we'll be discussing on micronutrients and its importance. I want you to relax and stay tuned. Of okay. course, you have one or two things to grab. Yes. So, what are these micronutrients? Micronutrients are nutrients, are essential nutrient elements that are required in trace amounts. From the name minor, you will, you, as you kind of, you be like, it's a little, mm -hmm. it's a little quantity, mm -hmm. but you should not neglect it mm -hmm. because these are nutrients that are called small but mighty because mm -hmm. they play a very important role in plant growth and development. Then, without this nutrient, there will be a decline in crop productivity. So these micronutrients are very important for you to have optimal productivity of your crops. But I want to ask, can you give us some examples of these micronutrients? Well, out of 17 nutrient elements that are required for plant growth, eight are micronutrients. Okay. We have boron. Boron. We have chlorine. Chlorine. We have copper. Copper. We have iron. We have zinc, mm -hmm. we have manganese, molybdenum, and nickel. So, but what happens when there's a deficiency? Well, a lot happens. You know, that's why I said that you should not neglect it because they are minor. For borum, deficiency of borum is, you will see some on your plant leaves, there will be discoloration on the plant leaves. And also, uh, the plants that are growing, you start seeing signs of death. Example of crops that experience this deficiency is alfalfa. Then we have alfalfa. Yes. Hmm. Then we have chlorine. Deficiency of symptoms of chlorine are, are, are chlorosis. Chlorosis is yellowing of leaves hmm. due to lack of chlorophyll. Another deficiency symptoms we have is wilting of leaves. This is when root is unable to supply sufficient moisture okay. to the stem and plant leaves, and this could be as a result of drought and waterlogged soil. For copper, the deficiency symptom is seen on the leaves. You see the leaf to get twisted and okay. then die off. Example of crop that experiences is wheat and wheat. corn. Then for iron, the deficiency symptom is, is chlorosis, but this particular chlorosis happens between the vein of the stem and Example of crop that is when the deficiency symptom is soya bean. Then we have another one called zinc. The deficiency symptoms um, of zinc is shown as in the deficiency symptom is stunted growth. Like you see crop, mm -hmm. instead of it will, it will not have rapid growth, how it's supposed to how it's supposed to mm -hmm. have how it's supposed to grow. Then example of crop that experiences this is corn. So you see the reason why I said this micronutrient should not be neglected. Yes. It's very important because it plays an impressive role in plant growth and development. And this, we, if applied sufficiently, you will have an optimum productivity of your crops. Thank you. Thank you so much. I should be the one to say thank you. In fact, all the audience and I joined to say thank you so much. Okay. It's still farm and fortune. Don't go anywhere. Next up is Ban Banta. See you there. It's my favorite part of the show, Ban Banter with Helen Paul. As always, we have two wonderful guests. Thanks for coming to the studio. We have Ibrahim Velo and Mary Olatunde. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm so curious. Are you in, are you in any way a farmer or something? Because I don't know. You don't look like farmers to me. Are you a farmer? <laughs> yes, I am. You are? Yes. What do you do? Okay, I don't farm directly. I work with farmers. You work with farmers? Yes. What about you? Mm, the, 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 I'm still a startup. So trying to incorporate uh, animal husbandry and planting together. So do chicken kiss? No. How do they do it? Uh, when, the, when the female chicks is, in, is on it, 
Hmm. So, it, so it starts to show some characteristics that the, the opposite sex understands. So when the opposite sex saw it, then they start the running activity starts. So that means you have a big compound where they can run around. Yes. Who is in the garden? And at that point, how do you feel like the owner? At least you, you feel the fact that at that moment, because once the mating is successful, the, the tendency that the female chicks will lay fatter egg is very high. All right, so I want to ask you another question. If you have a business yes. and your friend has the same business, do you think it's good for you to share your secrets? Yes. Why? Uh, sharing my secrets with my friends, because before I go into my own business, I have my own unique selling points. My Would you friend, give them the unique points? Our selling points will be different because I don't know when it starts. Probably maybe when we are in the line of business, that gets, that's, uh, that gets to know, as in, that is when we tend to know each other. So I have my unique points. He also has in, uh, his own unique points. So if probably we have the same unique selling points, me telling him the secrets will make me a better entrepreneur in the sense that it makes my friend a better business owner and it makes him a favorable competitor, and as in a competitor. Because without, without a favorable competitor, the markets cannot develop. So and I cannot remain in my own hemisphere. Space, yeah. I cannot claim a local champion. So there is need for me to incorporate what I know in other business. For because immediately I saw them replicating that, there will also be a need for me to think outside my own box. Take outside the box. And be a better entrepreneur. Great. What about you? I will, but it depends on. I won't just go and call my friend and sit my friend down and share the secret. Mm. Depends on if my friend comes to me mm -hmm. for me to maybe like mentor him. Probably he is coming up in that same line of business. And I think mm. it depends on the motive. Mm. So if I eventually share my secrets, our mode of execution will definitely be different. Mm. So I, I sincerely am loving this energy. Now let's see if you can keep up as we play this game today. On the board, there are six benefits farmers can enjoy from farming community. You have 15 seconds to look at them, then you will be required to walk to the stand board. Yeah? When the time is up, the buzzer comes on. Boom, then you stop writing. Are we ready? Buzzer, let's go! You can use capital letter, small letter, mix the letter. Just make sure you repeat everything we want. Great. Hmm. If somebody is on eat, you will know. You would know. Beautiful. Thank you. We have our winner. Congratulations to our winner, Mr. Ibrahim Bello. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It shows that you're on heat. Always ready for any heat. And that's necessary for all farmers. You're also a winner. Congratulations. On Farm and Fortune, everyone is a winner. But for today, we have Ibrahim Bello as our number one wow. winner for the game today. And that's it for Ban Banter today. All right, stay tuned. It's still Farm and Fortune. Don't go anywhere. You know one thing I like about this program? What? Guess. And you're hosting the show with me, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to feel important, but that's not it. You would have just said, I don't know. May I talk what? One thing I love about hosting this show is the fact that all my audience are always ready to welcome us on Fam and Fortune. Uh, what did I say? What did you say? Same thing now. Audience, so, me, oh, you. Is it not one big happy family? The more we are together, together, together. That's all. Yes. Huh? One love, one big family, and fam and fortune. That's right, that's right. Don't forget to always keep up with us, same station next week. And follow us on our social media handle at Farm and Fortune on YouTube and Instagram. My name is Ellen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And see you next, next week. week.